In the third and last lecture of this app, we're going to be talking about venom immunotherapy and more practical nuts and bolts. Before we begin, we should be aware of the risk factors for immunotherapy reactions. Some of these are modifiable while others are not. Female sex is a risk factor. Immunotherapy with bee venom tends to cause more reactions than others. Rapid dose escalation beyond the modified cluster rush that I spoke of before. Pre-existing allergic rhinitis or ATP mastocytosis or an elevated serum tryptase. Some other risk factors that were thought to be risk factors for immunotherapy reactions but turned out to be not the case are age and beta blocker therapy. Uncontrolled asthma is also a risk factor as in all immunotherapy. Now the duration of therapy is typically four to five years but to stop therapy requires some proof of loss of sensitization when there's a decline in serum venom specific IgE to undetectable levels, this is another point where you can stop. The more serious the original reaction, the more likely immunotherapy needs to be evaluated on whether or not one can stop. Systemic reactions during treatment can be indicative of retained anaphylaxis risk. Approximately 10% of intradermal negative patients will continue to have an immunocap positive. I personally recommend testing patients with both intradermal testing and specific immunocap testing to their relevant allergens at the end of five years to determine whether or not you can truly stop. Potential risk factors related to risk of a re-sting reaction after stopping venom immunotherapy include adults, especially in advanced ages, honeybee sensitization versus vespid sensitization, more severe initial anaphylaxis, reaction during venom immunotherapy, and unchanged skin test reactivity during venom immunotherapy. This is taken out of Reisman, discontinuation of venom immunotherapy, and the monograph insect allergy. Here you will find the product monograph cluster modified rush protocol in the ALK set. This is typically what I use to get patients up to a protective state quickly. The sets are either supplied as treatment kits or multi-dose vials. Diagnostic kits are similar to treatment kits. When diluted down, the stock kit will be at a concentration of 100 microgram per cc. The first dilution will be 10 microgram per cc or 1 in 10 dilution. The next dilution down will be 1 microgram per cc which is 1 in 100 dilution from the original neat concentration. This is typically the final dose that is used for intradermal testing as it gives good receiver operating curves for specificity and sensitivity. This can be further broken down into 0.001 microgram per cc. These are administered 20 minutes apart, starting at the lowest dose and working your way up. Any test that is positive, you do not need to move on to the next dose, as it is already deemed a positive sensitization result. You need to go up to the 1 microgram cc in order to have ruled out a venom allergy. For the first year patients, I recommend the multi-dose vials, but this is dependent on prescriber preference. Insect sting treatments with venom immunotherapy can involve local reactions. These can be treated with cold compresses, local anesthetic cream, oral antihistamines, or topical steroids. Very rarely you'll need to use oral steroids to control these reactions. Large local reactions to venom immunotherapy can also occur. As a rule of thumb, a large local reaction is when the reaction is greater than 20 centimeters. Systemic reactions can occur with venom immunotherapy and you have to treat this as you would any anaphylaxis. If a patient has no positive skin prick testing or intradermal testing, one should rule out systemic mastocytosis or mast cell activation disorders. These patients tend to have moderate to severe reactions. They also are the ones who will have treatment failures. Venom sensitization and mastocytosis can coexist and it's a good idea to screen for this if there are other symptoms or very severe reactions. Other tests exist to also test for venom allergies such as basophil activation, however these are not routinely available. Once you've identified which venom the patient is sensitized to, you will do venom immunotherapy to that specific venom. The most common scenario I see and patients who have multiple sensitization are patients who react to all Vespids. In this case, I recommend the mixed Vespid treatment. After discontinuing venom immunotherapy, only 5% of reactions tend to be severe, which is at no greater risk than the general population. It is worth noting that the product monograph suggests treating indefinitely. 
This is for the small risk of patients who may have reactions after stopping venom immunotherapy. The insect practice parameter, however, suggests that skin tests and IgE decreases and you've proven loss of sensitization, you can stop venom immunotherapy after five years. Thank you.